I've commented before that I really don't like working on things that other people have gotten into and tried to fix or done their own maintenance or whatever. I really don't like working on other people's work. And this is exactly the reason why. Got an Akai X360. This is the Crossfield Head Open Reel Recorder. What the Crossfield Head was, was it was a system. I've got this tied up just for testing. It's a system where they had four heads. A race head, two record heads, and a playback head. The idea behind Crossfield recording was actually quite simple. On a normal tape deck, on a, you have a, your audio signal and a bias signal. The bias signal is used to drive the audio signal onto the tape. And it's an AC signal. The, the problem with the bias signal is the bias signal is quite a strong signal and it actually will result in erasure of higher frequencies. So the idea behind the crossfield head is that you have a second head below the tape that injects the bias signal at a different angle from below the tape, thereby biasing the tape but not affecting the frequency response. And how it works is, well, when you put it into record, this head will actually pop up. So I put it into playback, you'll see that the crossfield head is nowhere near the record head. But if we put it into record, you'll now see that the crossfield head actually engages at an angle to send its signal into the tape just before the head or the tape passes over the recording gap and records a signal. That's the crossfield head. Now on this machine I've got a few things to do on it. The owner of it's already recapped it. They brought it to me to replace some of the belts. Namely the belt for the counter is not working. I got three belts here. Belt, uh, counter belt, one for the I think reverse matic counter belt and I believe the capstan belt. So we're going to change the belts and then we're going to set up. This one has a built-in amplifier. We're just going to check the, the balance and bias of the, of the amplifier itself to make sure that there's no DC voltage appearing on the speakers. So let's start by, we'll open up the front and replace the belts. But first I'll remove the magnetic brake control. I already undid the screw for that. I don't think this one has to come off. But I do have to take off the pinch roller. That just lifts off. And there'll be some screws here that have to come out. And probably these knobs all have to come off too. That's got to come off too. That's the, the tape cleaner. Has to come off, and this should lift off. Okay. Four screws in the bottom, two screws in the back. The cabinet or the chassis lifts out of the cabinet itself. You be careful when you're working on these units that you don't set them, don't stand them up because the boards here are exposed and they're easy to break. So if you're working on a unit like this, you want to keep it on one side or the other. Otherwise, so you run the risk of damaging the boards. I should be able to get that belt out the back and change out the capstan belt from here.
Okay, now I can slide the belt around the back like that and get the new belt in place. Hmm, the new belt is quite a bit smaller than the original belt. Geez, is that going to be too tight? The old belt's actually not in bad shape, but this new belt is quite a bit smaller than the old one. So we'll stuff it in through here. I can take it around the back side of the of the, the flywheel from in behind here. I can reach it and pull it around the back side of the flywheel and around the, the, the uh, motor. It's going to stick a piece of tape to the flywheel to hold the belt in place so I can spin the flywheel around and take it around the back side because I can't get my hand in there to, to uh, put the belt around the pulley. So we're going to use some some tape to take it around for me. Even at this it's going to be tough. This new belt is much tighter than the other one and just trying to get it to go in position is going to be uh, bit of a challenge because I can't reach where it needs to go. All right, I got the belt looped around the flywheel. I can grab it here. Grab my tape and take that out of there. Hopefully the belt will stay in place. And grab the belt and try to pull this belt over the over the pulley here. It's really tight, this one. Oh, don't want to drop it. it. Took me long enough to get it to this point. It's like this belt is really, really tight. This is the belt that was supplied. I hope it's the right belt because it was a pain in the ass to change it. And I don't want to have to do it again. Okay. Belt's on there now. It's going to get it into the the track here for the right, the right pulley, the right, the right uh, frequency because it's a, there's a, a two pulleys here for 60 and 50 hertz. There, the pulley, the belt is on. Turn the motor. Okay, there we go. The belt is a turning. Okay, good. Belt's in place. Hopefully it's not too tight, but that belt is in place. Now we have two more belts that need to go on. One goes on. Uh, there's two pulleys here. One is for the counter, which goes from here down to the bottom pulley, and the other one is for this one here. This turns the, the reversing. I think they're both the same size. Let's see. RR9... Yeah, they're both the same size belts. They're a round belt. They're both, they're both the same. So, don't have to worry about mixing these ones up. Just put them in place and into the appropriate pulley on the take-up spool. And that one will go around the back side of this pulley for the counter. There we go. Okay. Counter turns now. There we go, counter's turning. Second belt is for the reverse clutch, or reverse switching, I guess it is, it's a switch. Uh, what that does on the, oh, gotta get it around the right pulley here. It's around the wrong pulley on the side. It's on the front pulley and it's gotta go to the back one. There we go, okay, second belt. 
goes around this one. There we go. So now, you guys didn't even see what I did. There's two, there's two pulleys on the back side of this hub. So one belt turns the tape counter and the other one turns this. What this does is, as the tape is playing, this dial will turn. And when you get, when it plays to the point where you want it to reverse, you turn that. And what that does is that triggers a switch when it's turned on. So that once it gets to this point, it will reverse and play the other direction. It'll go all the way back to the start position where it it reverses again. You can see there's cams on here. There's another switch on this other one on the bottom. Anyway, that's what this is. This is the reverse set. So that if you have a tape that's not completely run through to the end, you can uh, have it reverse. Uh, next, we're just going to bias the amplifier on this one, the, the uh, just the, the speaker amplifier. We're going to bias that so that there's no DC voltage getting to the speakers. The controls are right here on this board and on this board here. It can actually be accessed through these uh, holes in the back, so you don't even have to take the back off to do this. And we just adjust them with a screwdriver. You can access it right there, and this one here, through here. And how it's done is we use a resistor. We're going to use an ammeter, 8 ohm resistor. We're going to plug it into the speaker terminals and turn it on and set the, with no sound, no signal. And we're going to hook up an ammeter across the speaker terminals going through an 8 ohm resistor and adjust it so that there's no current flow. So as you can see right now we've got um, minus 2.3 milliamps. I don't know which board is which. We'll figure it out pretty quick though. I'll turn one and see if it adjusts and the other if not. That's the one. See, when we go the other way, we get a positive reading. So we just want to adjust this down so it reads zero. Okay, so that was one. Do the other one. It's got 19. And we're going to turn this clockwise, I think, to bring this back. Whoops, wrong control. Try the right one here. Don't worry, I didn't turn it. See, there we go. That one's sitting down. That one's settled down a bit. That one's looking good. Let's go back to this other one and see if we can get it to settle down and just stick it zero or close to it.
I think we're pretty close. I'm just going to monitor it here for a bit. Okay, it's been uh, doing pretty good here. You get a bit of fluctuation, but it's hanging out at zero. It's been like that for a while. And here's the other channel. The other channel's doing the same, right? Get a bit of fluctuation back and forth. So, I'm going to say that this one is uh, set up now. I've been monitoring it here for about 10 minutes. And it's looking good, so I guess it's time to give this unit a test and throw it back together. I'll put the board support back on. I was never a huge fan of these type of designs myself. The idea behind it was, of course, you could just replace the uh, cards that went bad or pull the cards out to work on them. But the, the problem is the connectors. They connect them together, cause a lot of problems. Tape's threaded up. Let's try it out. has a reverse feature. If I press the reverse feature, it will reverse the capstan, swap the head, and not play. Oh. Don't! Oh. Gotta have the capstan screwed down tight, otherwise that happens. Oh. This has got a removable sleeve. So it'll do one seven and eighths, one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, and seven and a half. Or with this sleeve on, it'll do three and three quarters, seven and a half, and fifteen. Gotta make sure that that's on tight. Otherwise, when it goes into the reverse mode, it will uh, spin it off, which is exactly what happened. There we go. what happens when you reverse it. The head physically moves. Watch. See? The head pops up. It uh, has a solenoid. It does that. Fast forward. These actually weren't bad decks. Rewind. I think this one's about ready to go back in its box. We'll do a test recording first. So I'll just swap the tapes and I'll do a test recording on it. We'll see how it performs making a recording and then throw it together. Okay, I've got my uh, source going here.
change tracks on my MP3 player and I seem to be having difficulty. There we go. Let's see what we can find here. This is music. This is stuff from YouTube's music library. I'm pumping this through my uh, amplifier now because it's going to sound better than these little cheesy little speakers. But I'm going to record this track. So let's get it paused here. Let's figure out how to turn this thing to record. I think I got to press that switch down and go like that. And then I will start the music playing. Oops. Might help if I have the reel locked in place. This is source. If I press, I think this is the tape button. Is that the tape button? I don't know what button am I pushing. Okay, where's our music? What the hell, is this thing not recording? Okay, this has got another problem. This unit is not recording. It's erasing, but it's not recording. What else is wrong with it? Okay, well, now we gotta deal with a recording problem. This is tape speed, power, uh, source is tape, sound on sound. This is why I hate working on equipment that someone else, like the owner, has tried to fix or done maintenance on. Because obviously there's more problems with it now. I didn't try to make a test recording before changing the belt. The only work that I've done on it is change the belts and bias the amplifiers the, for the built-in speakers. I haven't done anything else to the unit at all. I haven't taken any of the other boards out. But obviously there's a problem because it's not recording. It's erasing the tape but it's not recording and I don't know even where to begin now it's troubleshoot and find out what is wrong with it and uh, see if the problem can be resolved got all these edge connectors in them they're all ready to fail I'll have to get the manual and look up the record amplifier just do some tests on it and see what what's going on the bias appears to be working because it's erasing the tape this one might be the playback amp I don't know I'll have to look it up another reel to reel a while back from the same person that was the same type of design as this and I found one of the boards had been was broken on the bottom where they had set it up where they had set it up uh, on its base, like, like when you, as I said, you don't put these, you don't stand these units up because uh, the weight will break the boards or break the edge connectors. These units either have to be on the side or on the back. Try putting this in record again and see if we get any thing happening. Nope. That's the source. This is record. See if I do the. You can hear the bias getting turned on and off. Well, I'm switching modes because the playback amp is working. Interesting when it's on record, if I just tap on the front here, I can hear something. Like, like something's loose.
plug is loose. Is it broken? Looks like it might be broken. I think this plug is broken. I think that plug is broken. That plug is cracked. You can see it. See it opening up on the side? This plug is broken. I don't know if that's why it's not recording or not, but this is the head where the head plugs in. If those contacts aren't making a connection to the recording head, we're not going to get any recording. This plug is really loose. And you can see it opening up on this side. It looks like somebody's tried to fuse it with a with a soldering iron too in the past because you can see where it's all cracked right here on one side here if I tip it up a bit you'll see it this plug is cracked get the camera in see this that plug is broken I wonder if that's why it's not recording the contacts aren't being made to the head could very well be that's all it's wrong I think I've noticed is the selector switch doesn't seem to be working properly either but this is monitor mode, right, or, or source mode. Left channel works. Right channel, when I put it on right channel, it's still the left channel that's functional. No right channel, right? No difference between the two of them. And stereo, I get both. Now the record amplifier is have, there's two separate record amps, one for the left channel, one for the right channel. So the fact that it's not recording on either channel is telling me that it's something common, either on this board or, or somewhere else. Maybe a relay's not closing. Um, but it's not something that I was expecting to find because when, I, when the unit was brought to me, I was told that the only thing that was wrong with it was it needed the belts replaced and the bias needed to be set up for the amplifier. That was what I was told was needed on this unit and nothing else. So I've now got it in record. I'm monitoring the playback and I don't hear anything. But you see there's uh, rel relays and stuff on here that engage when it goes into record. This is a double-sided board. The owner of this had this board out because they changed all of the caps that are on here. And I don't know what damage they may have caused while they were in here. It's one of the reasons I really do not like taking on projects that someone else has started on. Because I never know what damage they may have caused. Like that plug on the front that's got a crack on it. Like the, the edge connector that's cracked. I know someone's going to say, well, all this equipment someone's worked on before. That's true. All this old equipment someone may have worked on before. But um, when the owner gets involved and starts changing a bunch of parts on it, you don't know whether they've caused any more problems. This board here looks like it has been repaired. There's traces I can see on the top here that have been bridged over. I'm curious as to whether there's problems on this board. Because the fact that it doesn't record at all is a good indication that maybe the record relay is not closing. Whichever one that is. I've got the manual for it. Just nothing's labeled on here. That's the thing. But I think I, what I need to do is I need to pull this board and uh, investigate. It looks like it's been out. Well, it has been because that's a new cap. And these caps down here have been changed. That's a new cap. That's a new cap. Like these have all been changed on here. Every one of these boards has been out of this unit. And that always is concerning, troubling, as they say, because these boards themselves were so bloody fragile when they were new. They, uh, just from transporting them, just just like transporting a unit like this and it's being bounced around in a vehicle, there's these boards here being so big, there's no, like, there's no support. So it doesn't take much to break them and that may be the case. 
and check for some voltages and see whether we've got voltages that are supposed to be going to the record boards. As I've already pointed out, the the um, like I can hear the record, I can hear the erase head clicking on and off, but like when I switch it here, except for this one, doesn't do anything. That's the previous recording that was on the tape. So it is erasing. Interesting. What's going on? The way it's erasing, depending on what buttons push, it's like it's not even erasing properly. It's partially erasing, but it's not uh, like these switches. It's like something is wired wrong. Or something shorted. I believe our signal should show up on these coils here when it's in record. I should have something here on these outputs that feed the head. I'm just going to take a look and we'll put the scope on it and see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to try to show you guys this while I'm testing it. It's in record mode now. Here is the output from the record amplifiers. It looks like signal to me. Let's just adjust it and see whether which one am I on here. Yeah, there's one there. You see, there's the signal. And the other board is this one here. So I have signal leaving the record amp. Signal's leaving the record amp, but it's not being recorded. If we look down at the block diagram, you will see here's our record left and our record right. They're both connected. They go through relay, this one here, PL22-1, which is our record relay. From there, they go back to their respective, um, well, actually it goes through the switching network on the front here track selector switch on the front and uh, from there it goes back to the record right in the uh, and the record left amp we have signal leaving or we have signal on the board where do we check it we checked it at um, let's find the record amp board so here's our record amp and we checked it right here right this is the output the output from the emitter goes through this coil which is these coils here that I checked it at and the signal then travels out from pin 3 and pin 4 of the record amp board which is right here pin 3 and pin 4 where it travels down through and it goes back onto this equalizer board on the main board here RD139, the EQ board wherever that one is uh, I'm going to find RD539 is it this one? there's a relay on this board I'm going to find RD539 but from there, as I say, pin 3 and 4, both of them they come down and they go into this other, they go into this other, the EQ board. And then from here, and this has got the play circuit on it as well. Okay, this has got the record speed selector going into it, it looks like. 
Okay, so it goes into this one that's got the record speed. Um, that's the EQ board. That'll be up front here where the record speed is. Uh, let's see, where does it go from here? Do, 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 do. You've got to trace this again. It'd be nice if I could draw on here, but the owner doesn't want any marks made on here. So it goes into this board here and it comes back out. Goes back down around and it comes up here to the record. Looks like to the back up through here see so I think our problem is going to be on this board here you see this someone's replaced someone's repaired these traces there's more of them down here that someone has repaired I think our problem is going to be on this board maybe one of these relays is not engaging but I think I'm going to throw this together right now I'll put the video up of where we've gotten to on this one and get a hold of the person that owns this because they're expecting a, a specific price for what do we got what the what is this okay now I start to get concerned when I see this so do you guys see this someone's taped a wire up with masking tape. Okay, yeah, I'm putting this together at this point. I'm going to contact the person that owns it and just let them know where they stand because uh, this is now all of a sudden has become a much more involved and much more expensive job than they had uh, initially, I think, budgeted for. When I have to start spending the amount of time and I've already I've already got about three hours into this machine so far the, the, the video doesn't show that because I've been doing a lot of work off camera but the signals there on the on the boards themselves I've got my record signal so the the record boards are fine but I'm not getting anything to the head if we look at the signal going to the head for example, when I switch it to single track record, okay, I'm getting a bias signal going to the record head. But when I switch this from stereo to mono, let me get my probe in there properly. Right, it goes stronger. But it should be cut off completely because without the signal being cut off, it's erasing both channels. Like when I put it in when I put it into a single track mode, one of them should go out. Let's take a look at the erase head and see what it's doing. The two erase heads are here. They're much stronger. Okay, now, see the erase head is look at the signal okay that one's on now it's off completely when it's in stereo there's no signal going to that erase head looks like it all where's the other side of it connect the other side of it's here okay so one side is grounded it puts power to the head and when it's open, of course, the, the head is open, so you got you got signal on both sides. And when we turn that channel on, it grounds it. Actually, it's not even doing that. In stereo, it's grounding one side. You know, something's, something's messed up in the switch. Either, either when this unit was put back together, it, something wasn't plugged in right, or, oh, I don't even know. I don't even know where to begin on this now. You know, I don't know where to begin because, obviously, Whoever was working on this will be the owner of it, I'm sure, unless unless somebody else got to it before. But uh, unless something wasn't plugged in correctly, plug in the wrong place, it just doesn't make any sense the way it's behaving. Like normally when I switch between stereo and mono, the erase head should go on for the channel that's being recorded on, and if you're recording on the other channel, that coil is dead otherwise if you're sending a signal to it you're going to erase the tape it's sending signals in all the modes doesn't matter what switch is switching the same goes for the, the bias signal to the record head something is really messed up on here so 
I'm going to put this together now and get a hold of the person that owns it and just let them know that uh, this is a lot more serious. Uh, when it was brought to me, they asked me to change the belts and supplied me with the belts. They had done the capacitors themselves and I guess the belt kit took a while. They didn't have the belts at the time when they had it apart to do the caps. So when it was brought to me, I was asked to set the bias on the, the amplifier for the speakers and they even made up a little jig for me to do it with that with that resistor. This was supplied by the customer. They made up the little test jig that shows you in the manual what to do. It's just an 8 ohm resistor to measure the milliamps for the idle to balance the amplifier. And my job was to balance the amplifier and put the belts on that were supplied, which I did. And then I discover it doesn't record. And I've touched nothing on the record circuit and it's it's all over the map what it's doing. So at this point, this unit's going back together. It's been here for months. It's probably going to be here for months again. The person that owns it has been bugging me about it, but I've just been so bloody busy I haven't got to it. Well, now I got to it and it's a lot more involved than I think anybody was expecting it to be. So right now this one's going to go back together and it will sit until I get to it again after I speak with the owner because I've got stuff piling up that uh, I need to get to and I can't get to stuff that's piling up when I've got one that is barking in other words a dog and this one has now become a dog either something got broken when it was being transported or when it was serviced before wires were disconnected and they were put back on the wrong place I can see where wires have been unsoldered off some of these boards like the board at the back here I can see some of these wires have been unsoldered and resoldered this board has been repaired but somewhere along the line something wasn't put back right it's that mess there and um, it's going to be a lot more involved. So I'm going to close this one off now, throw this together, and uh, we'll pick this up. At some point, we'll pick this up and get back on it. Incidentally, I didn't film this coming apart, so I figured I'd show you guys going back together. All these Akai decks like this, you must take them apart on their side. You must remove the chassis on their side because you don't want to have anything dragging on the front here because these boards here, they will break if they come out of the chassis and it hits the bench or anything they'll break it looks like this one's already bent right here this this piece of the chassis looks like it's kind of bent it's at an angle there so maybe this thing got dropped see this see this 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 is bent in right there but um, all these units when you take them apart they come apart on their side and they go together on their side you, put, you slide them in like this you tip them forward kind of put the back on like that and then tip them up and slide it in. Very carefully so that you don't damage any of those cards on the bottom. And then once it's in place, then you can fasten the screws to hold it in place. But that's how you take these, these monsters apart. They're very heavy and you just take them apart very carefully like that. Once the chassis is in place, I can use the screws to pull the chassis down and then the screws on the bottom it's got like it's eight screws to hold this together four in the back and four in the bottom and two were missing when it came in and this cabinet was like this when it arrived here it's been trashed you can see it looks like this corner looks like this may have been dropped at some point anyway I just wanted to show you guys how to put them together and uh, we'll pick this up on another another one I've said that already we'll say it again we'll pick this up again once I get approval to uh, spend more money to find out why it's not recording. Thanks for watching.